What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Hey, how you Hi, doing? Um, here at the Pistons game, about to come and check out Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. But more importantly, um, it'll be the first game that I get to check out uh, Cade. So we are going to go down here. One of the reasons why I like to get here early is again, it's a networking opportunity for us to uh, kick it with some of our friends and uh, have a good time. Let's do Giannis look like an orangutan on there. We're gonna have a, a different kind of conversation because I kind of want to give y'all a story time on why I think the way I, th I think and how it is that I operate and where that comes from. So a lot of our different experiences is the thing that drive us to be the way that we are. And I want to share that story with y'all right after uh, they do their warm ups and we watch the first quarter and then we gonna have the conversation. Um, a little bit closer to halftime and when we go and get our food. I like to share my life and be an open book. However, um, I'm learning to pull back a little bit. But I remember a long time ago, um, I had a cousin and a friend that came and stayed with me and my family. And it's weird because my family has largely been the type of family to where, here, let me go into a corner. Go ahead, baby, go do what you do. Okay. My family and I have long been a family that have taken a lot of people in. And in taking a lot of people in, I've seen a lot of things, a lot of different stories. A lot of people have came into my life, both family, relatives, all kind of stuff, right? This particular story, it was a cousin of mine, right? Blood cousin. But he came to live with me for an extended period of time and he wound up being like two years older than me. Two or three years older than me, but I remember he was in high school and I was in middle school. But anyways, long story short, you know, he had came to live with us and it wasn't that anything was necessarily wrong. It was just that the environment was just more conducive because he was the only child. His dad was a lawyer, <clears throat> his mom, whatever, right? That's, that's irrelevant to the story. But the point of the story was that, you know, he was raised largely for a long time in our home. Same environment, same resources. His father was still in his life. Everything was still regular. Our family was close. Everything was tight. I would go and spend a night at his house. He was going to spend a night at my house. So it wasn't necessarily that we took him in. It was more or less that we was just together so much that he just wound up coming to live with us because I had older brothers, had a basketball court in the back of my house. We was always out and about. And that was kind of the thing, like in my household and in my neighborhood, we were kind of the spot, you know, that all of the kids and all of the young people, my brother's friends, my friends, they just would like stay forever after they came over or they hung with us for an extended period of time because we was just the environment that was nurturing and conducive to boys, right? We was the spot, everybody called my mom, Mrs. Daniels or Mama Daniels or whatever like that, so on and so forth. But anyways, he had, you know went back to live with his father so we lost touch for a little bit and eventually he graduated and when he came back it was like he was the man you know what i'm saying you know how it is they show back up they got the clothes they got the chains they got all of that type of stuff or whatever right so you can tell that he wasn't necessarily dealing on the up and up but he was just kind of like out there you know he still had a level of respect he still had that foundation of the church in him but Largely, it was a space to where he had started getting out there. <laughs> Anyways, you know, before he decided he was going to move out to California and go and do his thing and go and hang out with his homies, he was going out there with his friends and things like that. And, you know, my mom and me and different people in our environment was just telling him, like, yo, you're getting too far gone. You need to come back to the foundation of, of where you was raised and the things that we taught you and all of that type of stuff. <clears throat> Eventually he said, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm my own man. He was only like 18, 19 years old. Couldn't have been any more than 19 years old. I'm not even going to say his name because I just got so much respect for him. And you're going to see why at the end of the story. 
But anyways, long story short, he ran out there. He went and did his own thing. He wasn't ready. He thought he was a man just because he had graduated high school and he was old enough to do his own thing. He had a little bit of money in his pocket. He had some friends that was hyping him up, some people that was in his corner that didn't necessarily have his best interest at heart. He wound up getting killed. <clears throat> wound up getting killed, caught up in, in some stuff he wasn't supposed to be a part of. And uh, instead of surrendering, he wound up getting shot by a cop. Father's only son. And, you know, I'm still familiar with his father. He's still alive today. And that was way back in the day, right? I'm 39 now, but I was in high school back then. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it was a cautionary tale for me. And fortunately, it was a cautionary tale for me both ways because, you know, nobody wants to see anybody's life get taken away. And more important than that, it's important for us to also take into consideration that we have to learn from other people's mistakes. But he chose to go one way. And then when I got old enough, I decided to stay put and continue to learn from the people that had my best interests at heart. I was never in a rush to be something that I wasn't supposed to be. I was never in a rush to be the cool kid. I was never in a rush to get out there. I was never in a rush to, you know what I'm saying, champion or get the fast money and things like that. My life is absolutely awesome, but I remember each and every tale, each and every situation, each and everything, and everyone that came through those doors, and I used every last one of them as an example of either what I could do right or what I couldn't do right, including the ones that died that's no longer here, including the ones that went to jail that's no longer here. I used everything and everyone to my advantage in order to learn from or understand how I can do things differently. I don't have to necessarily go through it or suffer through it in order to understand that, yo, that's not the best thing for me. Watching a game on the TV up here while I'm in a club, in a, in a lounge or whatever. But you guys have to start looking at everything and everyone as a cautionary tale. Real talk. You don't have to necessarily go through it. There are some lessons that we see every single day, even right here on YouTube and on the internet. It's things that's taking place and we're going to see how it plays out in the long run because it's not necessarily going to add value to them and I can already see it. I see how it's going to play out. I see how things are going to be. I know that long term, everything that I do always works out for the best and so it doesn't necessarily mean anything about how it is that I feel right now, but it's more important to pay attention to what the long term results are going to be. I play for forever and you should too. You ready? Yeah. This picture I took of you this morning. Took a picture of me? Because I was at the nail shop and it broke. About to get up out of here. Um, got friends with me. About to be a Porsche talk right after this. Live streaming on the weekend, probably Saturday. Oh, point of the story. Point of the story. I learn from other people's mistakes. Also, be the one that survives, not the one that end up in a casket, not the one that end up in jail. Be the one that's sitting courtside with the Pistons tickets. Well, you might want to pick a better team, but got to see Giannis. We'll get to see uh, Brooklyn on Friday. We'll be right back here on Friday night, and life is good, all right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace.